I'm home. I've been, this is my third day home off the tour and my wife's off to work. The youngest is off to school for the first time. So I got a, I got an empty house. So it's, it's, it's so weird. The 2022 tour, I think I'll always remember it as um, feeling like we started over again. You know, even though we're 25 years into touring, it's almost like that first 10 shows, we were a new band and we could remember what it was like to play in 1996 and 1997. I mean, it was just so welcomed the stage. It was such a wonderful feeling getting to return to it, not knowing if we would. Show-wise, you know, we hadn't done a proper tour in two years, so as the cliche goes, you know, we got the band back together. I mean, to me, it was a very, like, fun, like, we all had a lot of fun. None of us wanted to go home. You know, we were all having a good time. So I think I think every one of us has expressed uh, interest in going back on the road. <laughs> the certain simplicity to tour life. I really try and soak it in and be present and think about all of the shitty venues where I sat backstage and just contemplated my life. Like, what the fuck am I doing? We were just all so incredibly grateful. So I'll look back and remember the feeling of, you know, wanting to kiss the stage and wanting to just jump out into the crowd. There's pretty slow mornings as the musicians, you know, we don't really start working until the afternoon. So it's pretty chill, but the kids, it's the opposite. You know, it's like, it is so full on to be trying to uh, put together the show that night, be a good father during the day is, uh, is it's not something that is that's easy and, and uh, not something I do real, really well. Oh, it's the best, man. It doesn't get better. It's the best of both worlds. I mean, I, I can't imagine a better experience than being able to uh, do what I love to do with the people that I love more than anything. You know, it's so nice to have the kids be able to experience the road and uh, uh, and experience uh, different places, different cultures. We're parents now more than we're bandmates, so it's also a really healthy thing to 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 be so grounded in um, in reality with with wives and kids because sometimes touring can make you feel like you're the most important person on the planet. You know, it's like our job is to be self-centered for 10 weeks. So, you know, having wives and kids and being together, I think keeps us focused on what really matters the most and why we do what we do. You know, it's it's a luxury too. It means you've made it to a level where you can have your kids on tour with you and work with you. And it's a beautiful thing to have another generation growing up around that positivity and music. cut it before but let's just do half of that for junior so it's just like i honestly love soundcheck in an empty venue i think it's i think it's the most amazing experience that's part of the dream you know i used to work in a venue uh fiddler's green one of the venues that we played this summer i worked there in high school and college and i remember you know delivering kegs and ice for the shows and i'd be there early when the when the band's uh, production was getting set up and sound was going up. And then if I was lucky, I'd be inside this huge outdoor venue, just me listening to a band sound check. And so I was like, oh my gosh, can you know, can you even imagine playing the drums and hearing the bass drum? Boom. Just huge in this empty venue, knowing that there's the anticipation of people being there that night. Dear old friend, it's you we need 
There's blood in the gutters and fear in the streets. Yeah, I mean, I always feel like the shows and the, like I, that stuff is, is always a bit make believe. Like it's helpful not to think of all the people arriving in the cars and getting out and partying in the in the parking lot. It's, it's what, what's real to me is you know the relationships I have with my bandmates and the relationship I have with my wife and kids. Certain people came to like 20 shows, you know, so when you see those people night after night, then that gets to be kind of real. So we follow the band around and we meet cool people uh, all over the country. So a lot of shared interests and shared uh, values. It's probably safe to say we've been to like 40 or 45 or so shows, uh, maybe more, but trying to be, <laughs> trying to be modest. Uh, and I think we got six more left on the tour here. They've really kind of inspired me and gotten me through some some tough times. I started listening to them in college. I'm a recovering addict, and um, uh, their music really helped me to get through that and, and get sober. And um, you know, anytime I need a little pick me up, I think uh, they're there. It's, it's a culture they kind of created. They're just nice people, and just a great community. It's amazing how fast time flies by. That's what's crazy about it. All of a sudden, it's two decades later, and we're still doing the same thing. My buddy surprised me for my birthday in 2006 when we were playing Madison Square Garden. Taking a trip to a city we've never been to, the atmosphere, you know, I listen to music, it just brings me back to friends I have and friends I don't, and just makes me feel at peace and calm. The last 20, 15 years of my life have been punctuated by dispatch, and I think, you know, I've, I feel like I've grown up with dispatch, you know. I'm turning 40 next week, and I'm very comfortable with it and I've had this incredible soundtrack to follow me around the whole entire time. But in some ways it's the same, but tonight the crowd they came. My brother just discovered this band and said, have you heard this band's Dispatch before? I said, listen, I've been hearing Dispatch for 20 something years. I didn't realize how big they were when I first heard them. Like, I didn't realize that they had sold out, like, the Boston Garden. It's like, I'd never heard of them. I'm like, who are these guys? Because they broke up for a little bit, and they came back, and I think everything they've done since has actually been even better. There almost feels like two dispatches, you know? There's the dispatch that everyone remembers and the last dispatch at the Hat Show when they did 100,000 people in Boston. And then there's the new dispatch where it's, you know, the five of us, you know, playing the songs that are new, playing and, and old, but, you know, we're this different version and it just kind of is what it is now. This is like Dispatch 2.0 and we're just a different band now. Me and Matt and JR have our very different like musical sort of backgrounds than those guys and each other. And the whole point is like, let's, you know, what what's the chemistry of this band? You want to be able to do stuff that you feel proud of and, and happy with, right? But at the same time, you've got to play it. you got to give the people what they want. You know, you're playing songs that were written with a different lineup. A lot of the songs were, but a lot of the songs weren't. This is what Dispatch is now. And uh, we, I, you know, I hope you enjoy it. We, we took big breaks off you know, and did other things. And I think the only thing that brought us back together was like, hey, we can get a lot of people together and raise money for this or that cause or awareness for this or that. And so I think that brought us back together. I think without that, we would have just, you know, gone on to do different things, you know, halfway through our, our career. And it's really important, you know, to all of us, I think, in the band that there's, that it, there's, there's a music component and then there's something else. I think gratefully we're uh, 
trying to navigate life as privileged, you know, white men who are just now starting to realize like we have a hall pass through our country and through most parts of the world because of our skin color and the zip codes that we were born into. When we realize how unprivileged others are who are born into different zip codes, different countries, different skin color, different socioeconomic layers. I mean, we're just confronting a lot as we get older. And I think more than anything, I hope we're just really good at asking questions because we're certainly not expert on any of it. But that's been our real focal point for this whole tour is, is, is raising money for EMI, which stands for Ending Mass Incarceration. So this guy, Raula, who had served some time and is an artist, he designed the T-shirt and the poster. And we hope to do a lot more with that and do, and do all our T-shirts through different organizations that are using returning citizens and giving folks a second chance. Long hair and longer stride Skateboard affair with a primal try Both our wives kind of joke that Chad and I were married first and that we're in a marriage of sorts, which I, I would agree. I mean, you know, I got to see him just, you know, kind of the free spirit Chad. You know, he he just couldn't commit to anything, really. I think he was afraid of committing, you know. I mean, all of us have been in various parts of our life and in different seasons, but to see him go through that and then to see him become a dad once, twice, three times, um, you know, he's grown a lot as a man. He's grown a lot as a spirit. He's grown a lot as a friend. I think as a bandmate, it's a it's parallel. Something and never want it back. Oh, the riot and the rush are the one night. Brad used to be, I would say, he's more easygoing now. Um, he used to be quite intense, and I think because Pete and I were such flakes, Brad felt like he really had <clears throat> kind of the band, he was kind of managing the band in the early days and keeping us all together in a in, kind of in a kind of running the business um, and you know making sure we got places on time and all that shit and so he's been able to let go of that because we have so much help now in a, in a way it was good and bad his controlling nature you know Chad was not comfortable being the leader of our band in the first you know 10 to 15 years and I wasn't comfortable and Pete wasn't comfortable letting him. It's being in a band together for 25 years and, you know, us sticking it out through thick and thin and, you know, we agree on a lot, but we disagree on a lot. And that's what makes for, I think, a really wonderful partnership. And in the city the mayor said those who dance are all misled So you packed your things and moved to the other coast Said you gonna be like Rosie O Only the wild ones Give you something and never want it back The riot and the rush Are the one right here Only the wild ones Are the ones you can never catch Stars are up now to me that's kind of the tattoo the soul tattoo of the tour was just being present and grateful so every now and then we would talk about it from the stage like hey everybody look around like this is about as good as it gets to be together and to be singing one song and to feel unified and to know that we're stronger together and you know everything's going to change everything always does so let's be grateful for this this beautiful moment 